it's time to start on the next acoustic guitar. Stick around for part one of acoustic guitar build number two. Welcome back to Home Belt Workshop. I hope your day is going great. And yes, we're starting on another acoustic guitar build. This is part one of, I don't know how many episodes this is gonna be, but make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of them. I've got some materials here for my back and sides. I'll show you what we're working with, and it's time to get to work. In this first episode, I'm gonna focus on getting the plates jointed and glued up. What we have here is an ambrosia maple back. I've also got ambrosia maple sides. And over here we have a set of Port Orford cedar plates. These will get glued up to become the top. So maple, cedar, should be pretty cool. The first step in this whole building process is gonna to be to use my shooting board and a hand plane to joint the edges of the plates dead flat so that we get a really good glue joint. But before I grab the hand plane and the shooting board, I need to address a couple things. My hand planes need some sharpening. Before hand plane blade ever touches the wood, I wanna make sure that these things are nice and sharp, especially since I'm gonna be cutting maple, I wanna get a good clean cut. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time and sharpen up my plane blades and probably touch up my chisels as well. That way I can begin the process of this entire build with tools that I already know are sharp. We'll probably have to touch them up later on, but at least I can start out with tools that are really sharp. Now I realize that there's about a million different ways people like to sharpen their tools and I'm not really here to tell anyone which way is the right way. But the method that I've been using and I've actually been liking because of its simplicity is just using a piece of flat plate steel. This is a piece that has been blanchard ground so I know that it's dead flat. I like using the steel because I can just use some magnets, hold my sandpaper in place, and then using my sharpening jig, I can just go to town and get my sharpening done. Once I finish up through at least 2000 grit on the steel plate, I always finish up my sharpening with a few passes on a leather strop. I think we're ready. I need to take a couple minutes and clean up this mess because there's no way I can be touching these plates with hands that look like this. Now might be a great opportunity to try that fancy snap thing that those fancy YouTubers do. Never seems to work for me, but let's try it again. Yeah. Let's get to work. I'll start out by lining up the back plates where the book match looks good to me. Then using my clear acrylic template, I'll trace out the outline of roughly where the guitar body is gonna be. Then I'll fold the two halves up bookmatch style and would joint them on the shooting board. I'll start off by just making a few light passes until the hand plane cuts from end to end. Then we'll check the progress. So there's our first shaving I think went all the way across. Now we'll see how our joint looks. It's actually pretty good right out of the gate. To help see any irregularities in the edge, I'm holding it up towards the window and looking for any light that passes through the gaps. Looks like one little gap right down the center. I'm gonna line this back up, take another cut or two, and then we'll use a sanding beam to bring it in perfect. Let's check it out. I don't know how well you can tell but that seam gets virtually invisible. Very cool. So now I'll fold this guy up so that my outline is on the outside. I'll use a couple pieces of blue tape to kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna use the same clamping method that I used on the first acoustic, which involves wedging it into place in order for that to work correctly. 
the sides of these plates need to have a taper on them. The exact angle, not really important. It just has to be a taper. And really, as long as it doesn't go inside my cut line, we're good to go. I'll just use a long straight edge to draw a line where I want my taper to live. I'll use the bandsaw to quickly cut that taper. Then I'll use a hand plane to clean up that freshly cut edge. I'm not trying to joint this for book matching, I just need the edge to be straight. Now to get my clamping board set up. First, I'll put the plates into the board and I'll slide the adjustable fence to match the taper cut on the two pieces. Now I can securely clamp the fence into place and we're ready to glue this. And just like with the last acoustic and most of my other guitar projects, my glue of choice is Tight Bond Original. Not sponsored or anything, but this is the one that I like to use. With glue applied to the edge, I can carefully slide the plates into the wedged board. I'll place a piece of parchment paper on the top to protect the surface of the wood. And to keep the whole thing flat, I'm just going to use a heavy concrete block as a weight. Now the piece is wedged in place, but we haven't put any tension on it yet. This is where I'll grab a scrap block of wood and a hammer and tap the plates into the wedge. Looks pretty good. When we tap this into place, of course, the wedging action pulls the two halves together and gives us a nice tight joint. I'm just going to add one more little clamp here to keep this back half nice and flat. Probably ought to put one at the front too. While I'm waiting for this back plate to dry, I'm going to go ahead and get the top plates joined and ready to glue up as soon as this is dry. It's like we still have a little high spot in the middle. That is really good. As I'm looking at the grain, it is really hard to tell which way the grain lines go. They are almost dead parallel. I think there's a tiny bit of angle, just a fraction. So I think I'm going to turn this around this way. <laughs> I don't think it makes any difference which one's the top. They are so close to parallel. I think I'm going to go with this orientation right here. This end of the board has a few little chips on the end. That's not going to affect anything. It's going to get cut off, but I want to make sure that I have some good material to use for the back strip. So I'm going to shift my template back down toward the bottom. That way I don't have to deal with this chipped area. That's going to get cut away and I can take my strip for the back strip off of the top. And this one joined so nicely, I don't even think I need to sand this one in because it looks perfect to me. All we need to do is cut a slight taper on the sides and we're ready to glue this one up. I'm gonna cut my taper almost backwards from what might seem like the correct way. I don't know if there's really a correct way. Since I'm trying to maintain this material up here for my back strip, I don't want to taper that off because that's going to lessen the amount that I have to work with. I want to try to keep this the full width. That way I have the maximum amount of material to use. So I'm going to start my taper from the outside edge and taper in. It's going to work exactly the same, but when we clamp it up, it's going to kind of be upside down. It'll work just fine though. Well, I've let this glue dry for about two hours. I'm gonna get it unclamped so that we can clamp up the top. I'm gonna remove all these clamps first before we pull this concrete block off there. If we were to pull this off now while it was still under clamping tension, there's a chance that it could bow up. Now 
There we go. And it's glue time. Since this cedar is so soft, I'm trying to be extra careful with the concrete blocks so that I don't accidentally dent the wood. And after a few tap, tap, taps with a hammer and a couple clamps to lock everything in place, the top is glued. While the glue on the top plate's drying, I want to take care of an issue with this ambrosia maple back. We'll have to do it to the sides too, but for now, I just want to worry about this. I know my next step once this is dry is going to be to run these through the drum sander, get them down to thickness. But before I run this set of ambrosia maple through the drum sander, I need to fill a couple small holes. If you're familiar with ambrosia maple, you'll know there's like a little beetle or a bug, a worm or some kind of critter gets into the wood choose holes in there, and there are holes in these boards. Now that little bug is what causes the cool coloring of ambrosia maple, but the side effect is the holes that are left behind. I'm gonna use some brown CA glue to fill in those little worm holes. I suppose you could use epoxy or whatever your method of choice is, but for me, some good old brown CA glue. I believe this step of the process ended up taking the longest. I wanted the CA glue to dry naturally without using any accelerants. The accelerant can sometimes cause the glue to fizz and bubble, and I definitely did not want that to happen. So this was multiple applications of glue, letting it dry naturally in between, and then I had to go back and fill in any more areas that needed some more glue. Took some time. Our glue's dry. Now it's off to the drum sander. After a couple passes on the drum sander, really just to remove the high spots, I've not taken these down to final thickness. And this one, really, I haven't even removed all of the glue joint yet, but I want to trim away some of this excess material. I've dug out my trusty mold and I'm going to lay this on the piece lining up the center of my mold with the center line of these plates. And I'll just trace out the location where I want to cut out the body. Now that I know roughly where my shape is gonna land, now I can trim away some of this excess material. The first thing I wanna do is clean up this top edge so that I can rip off a couple of pieces here that'll become the back strip to reinforce this back joint. Since this is all end grain, I didn't wanna use a hand plane, but a sanding beam sanded it nice and flat in no time. Now with my bandsaw fence set at three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna rip off a couple of strips that I'll be able to use later for the back strip. Now you might have noticed that I didn't take a piece of this offcut to use for the bridge plate, mainly because most of the offcuts had some sort of voids or other defects in there that probably would have been okay, but I didn't want to take that chance, so I'll just use a fresh piece of wood later on when it comes time to make the bridge plate. Now it's time to run these things back through the drum sander and hopefully get them down to final thickness. When running them through the drum sander this time around, I actually didn't take it to exact final thickness. I wanted to leave a little extra space. These are super close to where they need to be, but I've got just a little bit left to work with later on. It has a cool sound. Here, you listen. Well, 
the plates, they're done. We're ready to move on to the next step. That's gonna be in the next episode of this second acoustic guitar build. We're gonna make and install a rosette. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I wanna do for the rosette, but for now, these things are ready to be set aside for a few minutes as we are now well underway for acoustic guitar build number two. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can follow along with all of the episodes in this build. Hopefully there won't be quite as many episodes because I have a lot of the tools and jigs already made. But let's see, there might be something I need to make. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Stick around for more. Thanks a lot for watching.